we are stronger. We are more empowered. We break more ground when we join together. In addition to our annual giving, Eastern Bank is proud to be a founding contributor to the Massachusetts COVID-19 Relief Fund. Please consider donating today. My name is Carol McLaughlin. I'm the Executive Director of the House of the Seven Gables Settlement Association, and it's my distinct pleasure to welcome you to our annual fundraiser, Taste of the Gables. Those of you that have attended this event in the past have done so for a variety of reasons. Of course, supporting the Gables is at the top of the list, but you've also come to enjoy the fabulous food and the very social nature of the event. Tonight, I hope you're celebrating this year's Twist on the Taste gathered safely at home with a few close friends, enjoying delicious meals from one of the many establishments that have so generously helped us in the past. It likely comes as no surprise that the COVID-19 pandemic has hit the Gables especially hard. In a normal year, over 80% of our revenue is earned through in-person visitation and store sales. This year, only a small fraction of the number of people that normally visit us are coming. And while we've gone to great lengths to cut costs, the Gables is a very expensive place to run. So tonight, we're asking for your help just to keep our doors open. Why should you help? For over 100 years, the House of the Seven Gables has been a positive force and fixture in this community. We are an economic engine, drawing people from around the world to Salem and the surrounding area where they then enjoy the many amazing shops, restaurants, and other historic sites that make the North Shore such a special place to live. We are a gathering spot, a place for neighborhood meetings, lectures, supper clubs, and very special occasions. We are a place of dialogue, a place where people can learn and civilly discuss controversial topics around immigration and other social justice issues. We are a national historic landmark district. We are stewards of several buildings, artifacts, and archives of great historical significance, not just to our region, but to our entire nation. We preserve these things because they help us bring stories of our past to life, stories that help us understand our present and consider what we want for our future. When visitors tour our site, they learn about the Turner family and the immense wealth that family accumulated through the transatlantic trade of the 17th and 18th centuries. They also learn about the enslaved people who lived and worked in the Turner Ingersoll Mansion, a home that was later propelled to fame by Nathaniel Hawthorne, whose visits to this house inspired him to write what would become a classic American novel, The House of the Seven Gables. Although written in the 19th century, this novel contains themes that continue to be relevant today, themes of guilt, greed, power, and privilege. Our organization is actually an example, a model of how the privileged can make a difference in the world. Our founder, Carolina Emerton, dedicated her life and fortune to doing just that. She purchased the Turner Ingersoll Mansion, turned it into a museum, and used proceeds from admissions to help immigrants learn English and other skills that they would need to make a living in their new country. This settlement work is work that we continued to do pre-COVID and are committed to resuming as soon as possible. Because stories are at the heart of what we do, we've invited a few people to share their stories with you tonight. In a moment, Maria Torres, a former settlement student and now successful business owner, will share how the Gables helped shape her life. And our citizenship instructor, Nesta Gruyon, will tell you about how the Gables impacted many others. You'll also hear from some staff members and they'll tell you about the new things the Gables is doing to preserve, share, and continue the American story. I hope these stories inspire you because if you want the House of the Seven Gables to make it through this crisis and to continue to be and do the things that we have been for over 100 years, then we need your help. Please give generously by bidding on the auction items on our Greater Giving webpage and raising your virtual paddle just to fund our operations. 
On behalf of the staff and the Board of Trustees here at the Gables, I thank you all for joining us tonight. Special thanks to our gold sponsors, Eastern Bank, Salem Footprint Harbor Station, Immersive Worlds, and Salem Five Bank. Thanks as well to the many restaurants and vendors that are with us tonight, as well as those who have supported us in the past. I also want to extend my personal thanks to the very talented and hardworking staff here at the House of the Seven Gables, to our dedicated Board of Trustees, the Twist on the Taste Committee members, and to all of you for your support of the House of the Seven Gables Settlement Association. Enjoy the rest of the evening and stay well. My name is Maria Torres, and I am the owner of Maria's Gourmet and Maria's Javason, both in Marblehead, Massachusetts. I moved to Salem back in 1994, and shortly after I moved here from Puerto Rico, I enrolled in uh, English as a Second Language classes at the House of Seven Gables. And I did this because I realized that for me to become a successful businesswoman in this new environment, I needed to learn the language to communicate and to understand the people that I surrounded myself with, require me to assimilate. These classes helped me gain confidence, not only in my English speaking skills, but also in uh, social interactions in my places of work. I now am able to communicate my thoughts, my ideas, my opinions with ease, knowing that what I'm saying, it's completely understood. At the time, just arriving from Puerto Rico, it was uh, difficult to me to find a place that offered affordable English classes. At the Gables, they provided me with free classes that really helped me through those uh, difficult financial times. I also appreciated the sense of community that came with each of those classes. I was able to meet and interact with all the people that were going through the same struggles that I was going through. Some of those peoples, which I'm still friends today, 26 years later. So I hope that you will support the House of Seven Gables since these classes truly make a difference in people's lives. Hi, uh, my name is Nestor Grulon, a citizen teacher of the House of Seven Gables and I have been teaching the Pathway to Citizenship classes since 2012. Since then, over 100 students have become naturalized, and as well, including ceremony right here at the, uh, in the backyard, a couple of ceremonies that we already have uh, a couple of times, including last year. This class is only just to prepare a student for the exam for the citizenship classes, with the tools and information and also uh, with confidentiality as well. The reason why they wanted to do this is only just because they wanted to vote and as well they wanted to bring their family here and as well to get a better job. And why do they want to become citizens? It's because of that. Because they want to really to improve and have better quality and as well voting, which is the most, most important part of it. Pastor, can you tell us about some of your students? I, I need to remember, you know what, because I know there has been so many students in, in different cases, you know what I mean? I'm talking about each case is going to be so different. Some of them become, uh, one of them, my students, unbelievable, because he thought it was not, not going to pass. He said, no, you will. Not only that, when he was try, crying up and right in front of everybody else, he said, no, you will pass. Relax. You will. Because it was so emotional for him because he never thought he was going to become you a citizen. He said, no, you will. Relax. Trust me. And now he's a uh, manager of uh, the uh, Salem Hospital for the cleaning, which is, I, I did help this person anyway. I mean, not me, but I'm talking about the program helped the person to become, uh, to become a manager of the, uh, of the Salem Hospital right now. There was another student that she never thought that she was going to be a U.S. citizen. And this is one of the, the one of the woman, that I, didn't want, I do not want to mention her name, because she was an abused person by her husband. And she never thought that she was going to get it. She said, relax, you will get this. We're just trying to see what would be the proper way, how to fill out your application, and what would be the right thing for you to do when you became a citizen. She became a citizen this year, in the middle of this pandemic, and it's incredible. I, mean, I, I got to say, more than 
between eight to 10 students already became U.S. citizens in this year, thanks to the program. I, I feel so uh, happy about it anyway. I hope this will continue. And um, I'll be glad to serve uh, right here at the, at the House of Seven Gables. So glad to be here. Thank you. Hello, my name is Susan Baker. I'm the collection manager here at the House of Seven Gables. When I first started here back in 2017, the archives were in um, a disturbing state. They were, we really didn't know what we had or where the, where the information was or um, whether or not it was protected. In 2019, we got a grant from the State Historical Records Advisory Board, SHRAB, and they sent one of their archivists out to do a strategic assessment of our, of our archives collection. And, um, and some uh, important recommendations came out of that. Many recommendations came out of that report, but the two most important really were that we had, to, we had to inventory our archives so we knew what we had, and we had to house the material in a way that wasn't gonna damage it long-term, that was gonna protect this material long-term. So that was in 2019, end of 2019, and then COVID hit, COVID-19 hit, and, um, and the National Endowment for the Humanities, as part of the CARES Act, offered cultural institutions grant opportunities um, to work on projects that would both employ some of their employees, keep their employees employed, and also um, attack some projects that would allow them to share their information with the public in a new way. So we were absolutely thrilled to get funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities to process our, to inventory our archives and to um, make sure our collection was housed properly. We found at the bottom of a drawer a bunch of um, first edition Nathaniel Hawthorne books that were just in the bottom of a drawer and were moldy and a mess and nobody even knew they were there. We also have found um, manuscripts, handwritten material by our founder, Carolyn Emerton, um, back in 1909 time period um, regarding the site and her plans for the site and how she was gonna be um, creating this museum that would then fund settlement work um, with a local immigrant population. So we, we are the only um, institution that has handwritten material by Emerton, at least as far as we know to this stage. So we've, we found some really important things um, regarding the site. I mentioned housing before. So I'm gonna give you an example of why housing is so important. This is just a giant box of photographs, slides, negatives. Um, we don't even know what's in here. And this is not a way to safely store this material long term. We found box slides mixed in with photographs, and we were able to identify the slides by date, even if we couldn't identify them by subject yet, but and house them in a way that they that won't hurt them long term. So these this is all archival material. It's very expensive, and part of the grant was funding us to purchase this kind of archival material so that we could store our material in a, in a non-harmful way. There are two other important components of this grant. One is that we were able to get funding for transferring the various media that we had, like old VHS tapes and old oral cassette audio tapes and old movies that we found, that we some which we don't know what's on it, and some we do know what's on it, and we want that material available digitally. So they're gonna be transferring that material um, to a digital format so that we can you know, edit it and share it with the public. And the fourth component of this grant is really the most exciting, which is um, we're gonna be digitizing some of our most important material um, and making it available on our website. That's what we're doing right now. When I say we, there's a team of five people working on this project. Some of them are out there working away right now. Will Demick, Connie Barlow, Shelby Spaulding, uh, Geneva Can, myself, Pilar Garrow is involved as well. We were able to employ people to do this for the length of the project and also do this incredibly important thing for the Gables. So we are deeply grateful to the NIH for funding this project. All this material, all this, all this activity costs money. And, um, and we want to do what's right for the Gables. We want to bring the Gables into the future, make sure that the stories that are here um, will be shared in the future. And, um, and so every little bit helps. We are so grateful for your support and interest in the Gables and, um, and the, the work that we do here.
I'm Connie Barlow, a long-time um, interpreter here at the House of the Seven Gables, and I'm very excited to be working on this special archival project. This archive project is a great opportunity for us to gain a better understanding of our archival holdings. It allows us to digitize highlights to be shared on our website and to better house those materials properly so they can be accessed for generations to come. But this is just the beginning to um, continue to learn, understand, and share more of our stories. We need your support to make this possible. We are truly grateful for your interest and help, and we're eager to continue our storytelling tradition. Hi, I'm Will Demick, Visitor Services Specialist at the House of the Seven Gables. Here at our historic site, we enjoy telling stories to our visitors. Uh, we want to be able to share our experiences with them in the history of the house. And so when the pandemic started, we realized that we would have to change things. Uh, for the safety of our visitors and for our staff, um, we would need some new way to access those stories. And the answer was uh, virtual. Uh, working with Tony Healy, the uh, president and founder of Capture LLC, and with Matterport, we have been work well putting together a virtual tour, a 3D experience that walks you through the House of the Seven Gables, through all of it, uh, including the hidden staircase, as most people would be like to, would like to see. Um, right now, we're in the final phases of it. We're putting tags in on important objects. Things are of interest to people um, so that you can learn a bit about our site as you explore it. Uh, and you're exploring it yourself. You're not on a, a guided tour necessarily. You can walk where you want, when you want. You're in control. And I think that's the most important part of it. So I would love to show you what we have so far and uh, maybe take you into the dining room um, as a, a little a sneak peek at what will be coming soon. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a sneak peek of it here, not the full experience, of course. This is what you can expect for every room in the home. These are complete 365 degree views that you can turn right around on your system, getting some really interesting angles here too. If you visited the house before, uh, you might be familiar with the stanchions that we have running along this section here, separating you from the dining room. Well, we, you don't have to look at it that way anymore. You can walk around through these spaces, either using your mouse or using your arrow keys, and really take a good look at some of the pieces that we have right up close. And one of the things that we're doing now, we're just finishing this part up, is adding tags to various pieces throughout the home with information on them. So let's say you want to know uh, like a bit more about this Heppelwhite sideboard here, right? So let's move over to a, a good angle. You can get a good view of it. Yes, yeah, mouse over that. And here you have a bit of information um, about the sideboard and why we chose to put it into the room going to be two to three of these tags in each of the spaces. And the fun thing about that is that we can change it. We can make it so that we have a specialized tour that talks about a certain period of furniture in the house or talks about certain stories. Like, for example, the story of Susanna Ingersoll. You can hop right over there. Let's see. This is our good side. So you get a little history of Susanna Ingersoll there. This uh, program has many utilities. Uh, one of them that I'm particularly excited about, um, simply because the application seems interesting, is this interesting measurement tool. So say you wanted, really want to know how large the dining room is. Let's draw it over to the other side, to the door. So door to door, 19 feet, zero inches. I think that may be fun, especially if you're interested uh, in how large the floorboards are up in the attic. And speaking of the attic, there is, of course, a way to get up to the attic stairs, of course. We have this wonderful dollhouse view where you can see the entire house as it is. 
and uh, zoom to any room, but again, I don't want to show you too much of that. And so let's go right back on down to the first floor here. Tony Healy, the photographer who worked with us, said that this was one of his most difficult shoots was going up the secret staircase because the, it does go right up the secret staircase. Uh, but I don't want to show you all of that quite yet. So I'll give you a bit of a sneak peek. So this is, again, something we're very excited about. We are excited about the opportunities, the possibilities that this affords us, the ability to teach classes virtually as well to school groups. Uh, it is going to be a wonderful tool that will let you see the House of the Seven Gables in an entirely new way, from different angles, and uh, in a different light. So there you have it. We'll be expecting this um, quite soon. Hello, I'm so pleased to welcome you, to have you join us at this magnificent place by the sea. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I extend deep appreciation to you for your support, especially in this time of need. And to our remarkable, resilient Executive Director, Kara McLaughlin, and our persevering staff for adapting to the ever-changing COVID environment. Our Taste of the Gables is a time to celebrate the stories of the people who have created our legacy and the communities that continue to make our mission relevant. We are a place with purpose to gather together, to learn, to share perspectives. I moved to the North Shore 20 years ago, and when I saw the silhouette of the house, I knew I had to become a part. I learned about the history of the house, its past, its founding, its individuals, and about the context of trade, philanthropy, and wealth, as well as the individuals and the immigrant families who have helped shape our North Shore communities. Where else can we participate in wide-ranging, innovative, interesting activities and meet people of the past and present? And where else can we engage in diverse conversations that are respectful and civil and meet with people to exchange ideas? And all of these are really the wonderful ideas from Julie Arison Bishop, the Community Engagement Committee, and the Advisory Council. Thank you so much. Thank you also to Pilar Garrow and her committees who have brought fresh ideas to this twist on the taste of the Gables. And our deep heartfelt thanks to our sponsors for your generosity, to our participating restaurants and vendors, and all of you who make this event possible. To our friends and donors, we hope you keep bidding on our silent auction items, and you can do that through September 16th. Also, raise your virtual paddles, or make a donation to help keep the legacy of the Gables open and accessible. You are needed now more than ever. I have treasured the warm, gracious welcome extended to all, whether visitors or friends. Please help us continue the legacy and the work of the Gables for years to come. Thank you. You're ready for more. More for yourself, for your business, and your family. And at Salem 5, we're ready for you. From growing, building, and buying, to preserving and protecting. So when you're ready to move, Salem 5 is here to help. What moves you, moves us too. Salem 5, make your move.